Hello everyone, welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Hey, it's spring here in Pennsylvania. Here's a, a dogwood from my backyard. I shot this the other day and I thought, wouldn't this look really cool with the texture added to it? Give it that artistic look. Um, I use one simple texture on it. But today, it's all about taking a deep dive into the texture filter inside of Topaz Studio 2. Because I got to tell you this, that texture filter in Topaz Studio 2 is amazing. It has so many really cool adjustments and features to it that you won't find anywhere else. So I thought I really wanted to introduce you to this filter because it's a filter that really, um, I should say texturing is really an art form. And it doesn't come to you overnight. It takes some practice. It takes some time. It takes some effort. But the dividends that it pays you are really high. So I would really recommend that you would try texturing if you're not already doing it. If you're already texturing, maybe you'll get some tips off my video. If you haven't textured before, you're going to learn a trick or two, a thing or two. So, hey, let's get started and take this deep dive into the Topaz Studio 2 texture filter. I brought this image into uh, Photoshop from Lightroom. I just did some of my basic adjustments on it there. I did not add any noise reduction or sharpening to it. And inside of uh, Photoshop, I duplicated the background layer, ran it into uh, Topaz Denoise AI and Sharpen AI, which is my typical workflow. And then I uh, combined all those layers together and I had this stamp layer uh, for Topaz Studio 2 right here. And now we're going to send this into Topaz Studio 2 and we're going to then work with the uh, texture filter. So let's come up here to filter and down to Topaz Studio 2 and we'll get that launched. And let's really dive into the uh, wonderful texturing filter inside of uh, Topaz Studio 2. Let's come up to add filter and let's open up the texture filter here. Now I'm going to start out with a certain category I wanted to show you here. and We're going to stay in this category today, but we're really going to dive deeply into this filter here. So we're going to uh, click the drop down menu and let's go to two little owls. There's a lot of really cool textures inside of here. We're going to start out right here. All right, so we're in the two little owls category here. So let's click on the first one here. But notice one thing, we're defaulted at the opacity at halfway up or 50%. And that's where they default. Uh, the texture filter at but look how pretty that looks right there. There's the first texture Let's click on another one here, but look how it interacts differently with my image here Now notice that I'm in the normal blend mode and I'm going to go through the blend modes with you But normal is a really good blend mode. Okay, so don't be afraid to use that a lot of people will use other blend modes But normal is a very good one, too But you can't have the opacity up full because watch if you take that opacity up full You're just going to see the raw texture there. Okay, so when you're using normal, a little trick here, here would be to not take it up the full way. And you have various levels that you can set it to, okay? So, you know, you might want it at 60%. You might want it at 50%. It really depends. But let's go ahead and turn the opacity the whole way up so we can actually take a look at what these textures really look like. Like, Let's just sample a few of them. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, Craft Master Gold. Don't you like how, the, how they name these different textures here? It's pretty fun. Here's coffee cake. And notice the colors. The a lot of these textures are going to have colors. A lot of them a lot of them will have like border edges to them, which is really nice. And so let's just go through a couple here. Here's mossy oak. But you get the idea of what they look like. And now I'm going to show you what some of these other uh sections do like how we can flip them and how we can change the texture location and then we're going to get into some of the real nitty-gritty and that is how we can alter the brightness contrast detail saturation and i'll show you some really cool things you can do with your textures this is something that's exclusive to uh, topaz studio too so i really love the texture filter here Let's explore these uh, buttons here. So flip horizontal will flip your texture horizontally. So study your uh, texture. I'm going to flip it horizontally. See it flipping? Okay, and I'll click it again and it flips it back. Then we have flip vertically. We can click it and it'll flip it vertically. Click, clip, click it again and it goes back. We can invert it. Okay, so we can invert it and click invert again and we invert it right back the way it was. Uh, 
And say, for instance, you get it all out of whack. Say you have it inverted, you have it flipped, you have it uh, flipped horizontally and vertically, and there's a reset right here. So if you click reset, voila, it goes back to the original position that it was in. And then also you have this button here called edit. So I'm going to click it. And when you do, you get this little transform uh, bounding box that comes up here. So you can go ahead and transform the size of the texture. For instance, you may not want the edging on here, so you could uh, pull it out and get rid of that edging. So you can do a lot of different things with it. You can change the size here and you can expand it or whatever you want to do. So you may say, I don't want the borders on it. They're gone. And remember, you have the reset. So click the reset and everything goes right back to the original uh, condition. So let me go ahead and click edit and the bounding uh, box goes away. And then we have texture location. Right now, the texture is on the foreground. If I click background, watch my flower image will appear. Then I could uh, click foreground again. My texture is back in the foreground. Now, I generally work with my textures on the foreground. I've yet to put a texture in the background, but who knows, maybe someday I'll have a need to do that. We're going to start creating a piece of art very shortly here, but first I want to show you how these controls work. So, so watch the texture here. I'm going to take the brightness and move the brightness control to the right, and notice how the texture gets lighter. Now this is very important. This brightness is only dealing with the texture. It's not dealing with the entire image. Okay, so it's only dealing with the texture. See, now I'm making it darker. I'm going to double-click brightness and set it back to the uh, default position. And the contrast, again, the contrast, when I move it to the right, gets more contrasty, but that's just the texture. Move it to the left, it is getting less contrast. And I'll use this a lot of times just to mute the textured effect down. Very powerful adjustment here, this contrast. Let me double-click it. And then detail, another super powerful adjustment. Move it to the right and you will increase the detail of the texture only. Move it to the left and you will decrease the value of the detail on the texture only. And then if you take it the whole way to the left, you'll totally remove detail, but you'll have this nice soft uh, glow on your image here. And this can be very beautiful for adding special effects to your images. But notice how the luminosity values are there and the color is still there. So very cool. Let me uh, double click detail. And then saturation, this one is really cool too. So if I move it to the right, I'm only affecting the saturation of the actual texture. Move it to the left, I'm taking the saturation away. And sometimes I'll take it the whole way to the left and totally, totally remove the saturation. And then uh, use this color strength slider. And when I start to move it to the right, watch another uh, slider will magically appear under it. Watch this. See that color slider appear? When I move the color strength to the right, you notice my image is getting more and more red as I move the color strength over. Now, when I uh, move the color slider, notice how the tints will change. So now I can colorize that texture to any color that I would like here which is really interesting. And I use this all the time, and I love I love this in the uh, Topaz Studio 2 texture filter. So let me go ahead and take the color strength and move it the whole way to the left, and let me double-click saturation and get it back to the default position. And then we're going to take a look at blend modes and how they interact with our textures. We're now moving into the fun part of this tutorial, and that's the blend mode. So we're in the normal blend mode, and remember I told you, we take the opacity slider. We never use the normal blend mode up full strength, so we pull it back just to uh, to a place where we think it looks good, and then we can start doing some stuff with it. Like, for instance, we might get it around here, and we think that looks pretty good, and then we might say, well, you know what? I'm not really crazy about that texture, so let's click on a few other textures here. Like, that one looks really cool. That one looks kind of fun. I kind of like that one. Now... What I would do on this, I would come to uh, the uh, Add Layer Mask and get a brush and take my transparency and not take it the whole way to white, but maybe to a gray value here. And I would remove a little bit of that texture off of my actual flower itself. This is part of the art of texturing. You don't want to leave that texture over everything. Generally, you don't want to. But you see how that looks? Now I'll make my radius a little bit smaller and I'll paint on this petal right over here. Isn't that cool? And then I might want to paint a little bit off the stem here. So what I might do is pull this transparency more into to white. So I'll take less off of this section right here. 
And I'm just going quick here, but you, you, you get my drift, right? But look how pretty that looks. Now that's art, and that's beautiful. Now we can also, I just want to add this at this time, you can also, you can stack up uh, texture upon texture. Sometimes I'll have two, three, or four textures going in different parts of my image, okay? But we're not going to get into a full uh, involved uh, texturing today. But today it's really a deep dive into how does this texture work. And so now we're going to look at other blend modes, but that's the normal blend mode. This is a list of my favorite blend modes when I'm working with textures. Uh, normal, Multiply, Screen, Overlay, Soft Light, and Hard Light. These are my favorite blending modes. We're going to look at all the different blend modes inside of Topaz Studio 2. But these are my favorites, and but I still recommend that you try them all. But I just left this list on the screen for you in case you want to jot these blend modes down when you're working with textures. You'll find you'll use these a lot. Now we're going to see how the blend modes interact with our texture and our image, okay? We're starting out in normal, and remember normal, when the opacity is up full, you actually see what the texture looks like right there. In order for normal to work for you, you have to take the opacity and pull it back to a po point that you really like and start working from there, okay? So for now, let's take the opacity and take it up full. Now. Before I ramp through these different uh, blend modes, I want to point out that some of these blend modes are going to look horrible, and you're going to say, Dave, why in the world would you ever want to use that? Well, honestly, you have all these adjustments here, and a blend mode, just because it looks bad, doesn't mean you can't make it look good when you alter adjustments and alter the opacity, so bear that in mind. Remember, texturing is an art, okay? And uh, again, some blend modes will not work, but one blend mode might work on one image, but it won't work in another. It may look beautiful on one and horrible on another one. So you've got to experiment. So here we go. I'm going to hover through the blend modes. Here's normal. Here's dissolve. Nothing much happens there. We go to darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, darker color, lighten, screen, color dodge, linear dodge, lighter color, overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light, pin light, hard mix, difference, exclusion, subtract, division, hue, saturation, color, luminosity, and invert screen. Now it's time for my creative edit. I'm in the paper and textiles uh, category, and if you have Topaz Studio 2, you will have this, okay? So I'm in paper and textiles, all right? I'm in the normal blender mode. Now remember, I can take the opacity and pull it back in the, norm, in the normal blend mode and use it that way if I wanted to, and that might be fun. But in my case, I'm going to leave the opacity up full, and I'm going to go through some of these blend modes here and see if there's one that I really like. Hmm, Multiply looks pretty good. Let's try Color Burn. We're just going to ramp through these real quick and see. And this is the way I do it, you know. This is part of the uh, joy of editing, getting to go through these different blend modes. Hard Light, Soft. Vivid light, linear light. Now those are not working. I think what I'm going to have to use here is multiply. Now what I really love about this is the texture in here. Look how cool that texture is. Now, what would I do to bring that texture out more? I could come here. Let's try contrast first. Pull up on the contrast. Yeah, look at that. Yep, that's helping. I like that. That's too much. There's a spot where it goes bad, but if, I, if I'm careful and stay like right around there, I think that looks good. Now let's take our detail and pour detail up. Yeah, let's bring that detail up through there. There's a bit of a bluish cast on this uh, white opulence texture. So I'm going to take my saturation and pull it the whole way off. See, that goes away. Now, that looks really pretty right there. Now, what happens if I would come to the color strength and add a little bit of color strength? Now, remember, that's going to be more like a redder tone right there or a reddish tone. Now, let's try to warm it up here a little bit. See if I can add a little warmth by moving the color slider to the right. I don't want to go too warm. 
and too colorful. I'm going to pull the color strength back some. I'm thinking maybe right around there. Now let me try a little bit of brightness on here just to see what that'll do. And I mean a little bit. And I'll tell you what, maybe a little more, maybe right around there. That's looking really pretty. Now let me try, uh, let's go to the um, layer mask here. And let's see. Let me get a brush here. And I just want to take it slightly off the flower. And I just mean a little bit. So I'm going to take the transparency. I'm going to leave it pretty light and take a test right here around 0.79. Make my radius a little bit smaller here. And let's just paint off this one petal for a test. Because I still want to see some of that texture on there. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Let's just take a little bit off of there. Nice. How about off the center here? This is a dogwood. It was in my backyard. A spring has sprung here in Pennsylvania. Take a little bit off there. Yeah, that looks nice. And make my radius a little smaller. And that's too small, Dave. And I'll paint right off of this stem and leaves here a little bit. And right here, just a little bit on there. And I think that looks really, really kind of nice. So if I left click on the canvas, you'll see here's the before and here's the after. Before and after. You know, that's one texture, but I think that looks really nice. But texturing is such a, a wonderful art form. And... I'm going to do a lot more texturing videos, but I just really wanted to break the Topaz texture filter down for you because it is a powerful filter, and I wanted you to see how it really, you know, how it really works and, and all the different controls it gives you to really tailor your image to uh, the piece of art that you want it to be. I thought I was done, but hey, you know me if you've watched my videos in the past. It's hard to stop, so I'm going to add one more filter here. And this is a little bonus to the video. I'm going to add a precision contrast. And all I'm, going to, all I'm going to do here is take the micro contrast. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And let's bump up the micro contrast a little bit. It'll just enhance that texture a little bit. Right there. Now let's zoom back out. And now let's click the eyeball. So we'll shut that off. There's the before. And there's the after. It just gives it a little bit more of a of a little bit more of a pop. And I might just pull the micro back just a little bit. Just ease that off. I think I went a little too strong. Let's click that eye one more time. Here's the before and here's the after. Yeah, I like that. Now I am happy. Well, I hope you give texturing a try if you're not yet texturing yet. Uh, and if you are already texturing, hopefully you picked up a few tips and tricks along the way here in this deep dive video into texturing using Topaz Studio 2's texture filter. What a great filter. And I think after watching this video, you have to agree, it is pretty darn powerful. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.